Good evening, everybody. It's Monday night, which means it's time to go wild. Welcome to the Time to Go Wild radio show on Hotland Community Radio 92.3 FM. We're also live across the world on hcr923fm.com slash listen and via tune in. If you want to contact the show, do so via social media, Facebook or twitter.com slash TTGW radio. We have email radio at witnesswild.co.uk. We have the phone 01928 835 291 and text 07716 672 874. Start your message with TTGW or messages charged at your standard network rate. I hope you're all ready because it's time to go wild. A very warm welcome on Monday night, 7 o'clock, and it's time to go wild radio show here on Holton Community Radio 92.3 FM. And as the intro says, if your family bobs is a little bit funny, check us out online on hcr923fm.com slash listen or via tune in. Tell your smart speaker, find Holton Community Radio, and there we are. I hope you've all been having a good week. Well, tonight... But a dynamic duo are here to get the straight jacket, taser and nerf gun to keep me under control for another week. We have one who's a complete newbie and absolutely enjoying herself so far. And the other one, I could say, is a, a bit of a veteran at keep trying to keep me under control and failing miserably. Hello to Jen and Ravina. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. So have you all been having a good weekend? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we had fun in Hull and then fun again uh, in against Bra- Blackburn, wasn't it, the weekend? Yeah. yeah, well, we did on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, well, um, we'll talk about that in a little bit more length shortly. But I suppose I may as well do the usual thing and set off with the scores so we can all get nicely settled in. So here we go. Time for the weekly roundup of the scores across the Elite Ice Hockey League, EIHA leagues, featuring the teams that affect us. Starting in the Elite Ice Hockey League with the Challenge Cup on Wednesday. Manchester Storm 4, Nottingham Panthers 3 after overtime. On Friday, it was Glasgow Clan 2, Five Flyers 1. Moving to league with the EIHL. On Wednesday, Dundee Stars 2, Cardiff Devils 3 after overtime. On Friday, Belfast Giants 5, Milton Keynes Lightning 1. On Saturday, Guildford Flames 6, Dundee Stars 5, Cardiff Devils 1, sorry 4, Cardiff Devils 4, Manchester Storm 1, Sheffield Steelers 2, Glasgow Clan 4, Nottingham Panthers 3, Coventry Blaze 0, Belfast Giants 7, Milton Keynes Lightning 0. And on Sunday, Dundee Stars 2, Guildford Flames 4, Coventry Blaze 2, Belfast Giants 4, Milton Keynes Lightning 5, Nottingham Panthers 1, Manchester Storm 6, Glasgow Clan 2, Five Flyers 4, Sheffield Steelers 1. To the IHA Women's Premier League for Saturday. Whitley Squaws 5, Bracknell Firebees 4, and Kingston Diamonds 4, Bracknell Firebees 3. EIHA Under 15's North 3 on Saturday. It was Deeside 22, Widness 2, Blackburn 1, Nottingham 9. In EIHA Under 13's North 3, Grimsby 1, Nottingham 20. That was on Saturday. NIHL Division 1 North Morally on Saturday. Billingham Stars 8, Nottingham Lions 4, Sheffield Steel Dogs 6, Whitley Warriors 2. And on Sunday, Nottingham Lions 3, Solihull Sharks 6. Sorry, Solway Sharks 6. Blackburn Hawks D1 2, Whitley Warriors 4. And in NIHL Division 2 North Laidler on Saturday, Altrincham Aces 5. Dragons 2, Coventry Blaze NIHL 5, 
Bradford Bulldogs 2, Hull Jets 4, Widnes Wild 2. And on Sunday, it was Dragons 1, Coventry Blaze NIHL 2, and Widnes Wild 22, Blackburn Hawks D2 2. So have another roundup again, of course, next week here on Time to Go Wild. After the weekend's games, I managed to catch up with a few people for some interviews. Ah, oh, catching up with Andy Daintiff after the whole Jets uh, took on the Witness World at Hull Arena. Well, Andy, it was a different result to the last time the two teams met, for sure. Absolutely. As I said, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough game. The first period, I thought we was terrible, uh, and the second and third, we just picked it up, stepped it up. But all credit to, to Witness, you know, they came with a game plan. All he's always got a game plan, and he came here. And, you know, as I said, they took us apart in the first period, which they did, and we didn't play very well. The second and third was just totally different. They seemed, just, they seemed to just step off the gas, or I don't know, but it was just a, a different swing completely. So, no, it was good. It's good for me. I can understand that. I mean, Jets have had a, a bit of a slower start to the season, and uh, the things look like they're picking up. Um, we've had a we've had a t- it's a team basically made up of um, all the teams from all the players from last year with a couple of additions. We still haven't had Rich Jagger. He's still not played all the games. He got injured. Uh, Johansson, he's been injured. Kieran Beach has been away, um, and then Dan Hackford came back after three games. So we've never had a full squad basically. Uh, obviously, we meet him Be- Beach and Agger today, but it proved that we you know we can still play without them top guys. It's, uh, it's good to see We've got a lot of youngsters on the ice and that's what this, this system's all about just development Oh, well, from the other games you've played, how do you see the season panning out? Do you think it's going to be a, as tough a league, if not la- tougher than last season? I think it's going to be a lot, lot tougher than last season. Um, I think that the likes of Sheffield, basically we said before, Colin, anybody can turn up on any night and you've got to win. You've got to play your best game or you're going to get beaten. And uh, we said this last year, uh, but I think it's going to be even tougher this year. All the teams have improved. They're all stacked up with play- different players. Um, and I think it's... Um, well, hopefully for us, it's going to be a successful season again. You know, last season was brilliant, um, but we want more and uh, hopefully we'll get it. Well, uh, we've got to lick our wounds for witness and come back again tomorrow night against Blackburn. But what's the Jets next game? Uh, we're playing Coventry next weekend. Uh, and then I think we've got tell for the weekend after. I think we've got, oh, we've got double head next weekend. I, c- I can't make up the fixtures, honestly, at the moment. There's that many fixtures going on. Um, but we've got, every game's tough. Every game's tough. Um, even, you know, witness today, they were a tough side. They are a quality side. All right, they had a few players missing, but so did we. Um, but Ollie will get them bounced back. No, no problem with that. I mean, of course, a lot of the players from the Jets are through your junior system yeah. and uh, things are looking good for those, I take it, so far? We have a, I have a thing here where I, I want to play as many players as I can, um, many juniors as I can. Um, we had about four or five on there this tonight. Uh, Reggie Taylor, who was, who was one of my 18s players, he never looks out of place. He was his first, stepped up first game about five games ago and he's never looked out of place. He's a fantastic recruitment uh, and he's worked through the junior system. Um, as as most of the players have um, and it bodes well for us and as I say we can only build on what juniors we're getting through our system and uh, we're doing it the correct way we're, every, sing- every single player plays tries to play an age group higher and that's only how we can develop players now recently he was um, involved with an under nice cross ice tournament and just seeing how much those young kids get on the ice and keep skating and skating and skating and take it they're like that whenever you see them playing it's it's for me, for under nines, is a great, great uh, addition because you just see all these kids coming on the ice. They're, they're full of life. They don't, they don't really care. They just want to play, play with their mates, and it's so great to see. They're funny, they're laughable, and they just want to keep playing and playing and playing. And then you come through the age groups, you know, your 11s, 13s, and whatever, and it's, it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. All these, like, even these two here, the addition of these two, you know, they're two who are playing 13s and 15s. They're also playing conference and the challenge for England, and you know that's only through what we're doing here at the junior system itself so it bodes well for us and as I say if we keep the after the era of Jonker and stuff like that that's what I've kept up with and uh, we're producing more and more players and that's what my job is basically at the end of the day well, I mean, not witness. Uh, we've got their junior system growing, all the other junior yeah, systems, yeah, yeah. and uh, the efforts of all the juniors' oh, yeah. development. I mean, we, that's what we love to see within yeah, yeah. the sport. You'll get there. Everybody will get there. It, it takes a long, long time. It takes a long, long time, and. Uh, uh, get, Mikey Gobel, he'll get there eventually he'll get all these players and he'll get them playing through the systems and he'll get them playing up levels and stuff like that but it just takes a while it does take a long long time but once you get it you just got to keep hold of it and just keep going with it and it's it's great to see as I say we've got a good thing coming here at Hull 
and um, we have players from quite a, quite far coming play, playing here but it's it's great to see and the kids enjoy it we train twice a week and everybody enjoys playing so that's the main thing well, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time you're over in, in sorry, in Widnes. <laughs> it's my, the fact that I get confused with homes from home and home and home, having been in Hull for so long. <laughs> but, uh, you know, wish you well for the rest of the season and we'll catch you soon. Absolutely. Thanks ever so much, Colin. Cheers, Paul. I've managed to catch up with Lee Kemp uh, after the uh, Witness Wild were visiting Hull and taking on the Hull Jets on uh, Saturday night. Well, Lee, not quite the result we were after, was it? Not at all, mate. Um... I think it can't take anything away from Hull. They obviously were better on the on the night. Um, both teams were missing players, but that's no excuse. Uh, I think first period were all right. Could have been better, but take the two-one lead, so that's fine. I just think second and third, it just an absolute spiral downhill. I just I just don't know how it could have got any worse, if I'm honest. It, I mean, it is big ice. Um, both teams are skating hard, skating uh, well, but sometimes just the passes weren't quite linking in I think for both teams to, to be uh, fairly even but in the end uh, the bounces went to the Jets I think yeah I think you know we was unlucky on a couple of bits um, but there was no crisp passing it looked more like a rec game um, if I'm honest and again it's no disrespect but nothing was going right passes like you were saying um, they're not crisp they're not tape to tape shooting looked awful positioning we were out of place um you know just commitment i think you know second and third we kind of dropped our standard um we should have been going up and up and we were just going down and down so uh, well everyone every do- you know the phrase every dog has its day and sometimes yeah. even the best teams in the world have a bad day at the office so i suppose that's the best way of looking at it yeah i know um you know we, we can only get better it definitely can't get any worse um, so you know we'll go in tomorrow against Blackburn and you know again that's no not being disrespectful to Blackburn everyone says you know they're still the development team and things like that but we'll go tomorrow and we'll just put in a better performance than we did today and uh, we'll get we'll get the two points tomorrow for sure well uh, we'll uh, let you uh, unwind for the rest of the trip home and uh, catch up with either yourself or someone else after the game against Blackburn tomorrow night nice one cheers mate so yeah, it was a, a very frustrating game in Hull on uh, Saturday, wasn't it, Jen? Yep, it was. I mean, two up, looked like we were getting ready to start cruising. Okay, one goal towards the end of the first. Mm, you think, well, you know, anything can happen. Two, two under the second. You're thinking, what are you thinking? Do you think you come back into it? You're thinking you're still in the game, yeah. It's unfortunate, but then the third period happened and... Yeah, it, well, I mean, Hull's big ice compared to Widnes. I, for, from my perspective, it looked like the passes, they, weren't, they were, weren't playing big ice hockey. They were playing small ice pad hockey. So when they were playing passes, they were, that, they were as if they were playing on a slightly narrower, smaller pad, which Widnes is. So the passes were that little bit longer and a little bit, you know, they were like one stride too far the wrong way mm. and you could just see the frustration coming out on the bench and oh. yeah and you can't take it away from the lads like on the coach on the way home you knew that they were disappointed oh. every single one of them um but like we said you know everyone has a bad day move on it tomorrow's a new day and wasn't it it was completely yeah. different game they it, did. it was a bad day at the office i mean that's what i said to some of the guys you know well, we just draw a line, and we're all like, "Yeah, that's what we've got to do? Pick our heads up." And you know, it, it it it's one of those things where sometimes it just runs away from you, and it did. But a hundred percent credit to Hull; they dug in, they kept going, two down, kept going, yeah. and Dean Bowwater pulled off some fantastic saves as well. Yeah, he did. He did. And some of the defending was brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Can't I can't take anything away from Hull? They came out, had a game plan, and stuck to it, and. Well, that's the results for you. I mean, if you actually look, before we go on to the um, the interviews from last night's game, when you now look at the uh, the um, D2 table, nobody's actually got an unbeaten streak. No, they Because uh, Bradford have lost two in regulation and one in overtime. Witness have lost uh, two in regulation. Um, an overtime win, three regulation win. So the whole league is pretty much wide open from, well, 
I mean, the Hawks are having a slow start, but you know they're going to get better. As uh, well, I've got a couple of extra interviews. First one with Abby Coulshaw, and the second one with Rich Charles. I think we better hear from them, shall we? Sounds good. Here we go. I've caught up with a uh, member of the Blackburn Hawks 2 team who's had a very, very busy weekend. Abby, what kind of a busy weekend have you had? Uh, I think this game was my third of the weekend. So what, where have you been all over the weekend playing? Uh, Saturday I was in Whitley Bay. I played for the women's prem team there. This morning uh, the Great Britain women have joined the under-20s cup team. So we had a game this morning against Kingston. And I've driven straight from there. Missed the warm-up here and come to witness tonight. <laughs> it shows the level of fitness from uh, the people playing at this level, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty demanding. Uh, my calendar doesn't look too good this year. I don't think I've got a free weekend for a while, but I guess that's part of the game. Well, as people say, there's life and there's hockey, and <laughs> hockey seems to dominate what you're doing at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's just eat, sleep, breathe hockey at the minute. But I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so, I mean, tonight, yeah, the score lines another big one for the, against the Hawks too but I mean that team is building and building game on game yeah absolutely I think from last season we've uh, improved quite a lot the game yeah this tonight wasn't really you know our best performance but I think compared to last year the start of the season we are getting a lot better and I think we're only you know a month into the season so hopefully we'll pick it up I mean, anything can happen. It's 60 minutes and, uh, well, as happened to witnessing the whole one minute you're up, next minute you're down. So you just keep digging and I'll, I credit where credit's due. The Hawks kept digging in all night. Yeah, absolutely. Hockey's just an end-to-end game. Anything can happen. Uh, it's just one of them things, I think. So, so who, do you know who you've got to, for your next game? Uh, I think we've got Altrincham, I want to say, Saturday, and then D-side away on Sunday, I think. Oh, another busy weekend. Any more games for yourself besides uh, Hawks? Yeah, I've got another game in Whitley Bay on Saturday against Nottingham, I think, Premier. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm definitely uh, a very, very busy person, so uh, we better let you get off home and uh, recover. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thanks for joining us. I caught up with our one of our assistant coaches, Rich Charles, after the uh, wild hosted uh, Blackburn Hawks D2 team. Uh, so, Rich, give us your thoughts on that game. It's uh, it's always difficult playing in a game like that because the lads are, you know, it's a little bit easy. But that's where you practice things. And, you know, you've got an opportunity to 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 try out the things that you've been doing in training, and, and you, know, you get a little bit more space, you get a bit more confidence. And you know, credit to the lads, the easy could have heads could have sort of gone down and got a bit fed up but they kept going they kept going they asked for another goal every period and, and they did that so yeah um, spread the goals out across the sheet tonight and uh, even a couple of hat tricks I think yeah yeah well, it's good to get uh, goals through the lines um, you know lads stepping into positions and taking their opportunity so Biff rose to the occasion in that first line uh, Michael getting a few in that second line and, and Kenny did extremely well as well you know, Kenny Cooper and uh, is he? Forgot the other one, Kenny Cooper, and gone. <laughs> it's been a long night. <laughs> yeah, it has. It's been a long weekend, I think, for everybody. You up with the road trip to Hull and then home again tonight. So, uh, but next week it's uh, another busy weekend, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it was tough, tough schedule. There's a lot of games, um, and every game's a tough one. You know, we came in tonight. Blackburn always come here. Every team comes here trying to turn us over. So that, you know, there was a good attitude tonight of we've got to go out and it, we keep asking them be relentless. You know, score five, score another five, score ten, and we've done that tonight. But we just need to go into every game with that attitude. And you know, Bradford next weekend we've just got to keep the same mentality. It should be in our heads that every team we play against has got the potential to be top of the league. And we've just got to go give it our all um, and, and kill teams off when, when we can. Taking nothing away from Blackburn, they kept going for the full 60 minutes. Their heads didn't drop. They kept digging in and trying all all match. Yeah, I mean, all, all credit to them. You know, they could have thrown the towel in right at the start. Um, you know, and I feel sorry for the goalkeeper that you know, he's had a few goals put past them. But you know, again, he kept going, kept going, and then they changed. And in the second goal, he did a good job as well. And, and that is difficult, but you know, fair play to them. Well, wish you well. Catch up with you later on in the season. All being well. Yep. Cheers, Cole. Thanks for that. So yes, two very uh, chalk and cheese games this weekend for the Wild and I, I, I'll say it again, reiterate about the Hawks too, they kept going. You know, 
they just kept digging and digging. I mean, you're you're taking it from where you you were positioned, Jen. What what did you make of their approach to the game? They didn't give up. To be fair to them, um, the goalie did have to. We'd take a lot of shots. Um, the second goalie that come on did some good saves. Actually, I thought he wasn't. Mm. He did himself proud. Um, I mean, I've got the shots on goal here, and it was 47 on Blackshaw and 40 on Edwards. Mm. And 87 shots, that's a lot of rubber to see in one match. Yes, it is. I mean, four, sometimes you're lucky to see a goalie will see like 40 shots in a game. Never mind, 80 shots in an entire game split between two goalies. It, it was relentless, but they just kept going. So, you know. I mean, one, from, one a comment here from Andy Shutt. He just says TJ's uh, first goal was superb. Fought to keep the puck from going offside on the blue line and um, just smashed it home. And it did. It absolutely <laughs> flew past their goaltender. It was brilliant because we obviously stand on the blue line. And when he did that, he was literally on the floor. I think he had two Bradford... Um, Blackburn players Blackburn, on him yeah. and he still managed to keep that puck in and then when he scored I was like he deserved that just for that bit <laughs> I was like I'm not bothered about the goal he deserved it yeah so I mean and uh, of course we heard from Abby Coldshaw who uh, has played for the Witness Wild Women in the past and I mean she had three games over the weekend it's a lot of games one on Saturday and then I think it, she was in Sheffield for I think it was a GB Women's because they're involved in a tournament and so she was there in the afternoon and then came through to play for the Hawks 2 in Widnes later in the day, missing warm-up. That's a lot of commitment right there. I mean, we were saying off-air about the level of commitment here and how the guys and girls, you know, all the players have to dig in. But in the States, it's a lot different, isn't yeah. it? In the States, it's a lot different. Like, our, our team was the Lincoln Stars. They're under-21s, and they practice every day, twice a day, once in the morning, once after school, Plus, they have to go to the gym and work out. So theirs is seven days a week all the time. That's all they do is practice and play. And I think they play twice as many games as we do. Oof. So their schedule is a lot more rougher. Mm. But I, I think in the way in which that's it's a, it's a lot heavier on them, but their um, scholastic work and the hockey is all built together as a timetable, whereas over here it's a... Yeah. Without sounding insulting it's all it's an afterthought in a way and the the whoever's you know the players mm -hmm. have to commit i mean actually um when we got back from hull um on saturday night i was taking some i've given the guys a hand to put some of their kit in the dressing room and there were some guys playing sledge and uh i saw i saw one of the guys i remember you, you were here last week playing for the kestrels he said yeah it's gb training and there he is in his Kingston Kestrel. So he, he's come over from, from Hull. And there's other guys, of course, come from around the country. And it was like gone 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. And they've gone sledge hockey training. Yeah. When you love the game, you just you just keep going, don't you? you just practice and play and practice and play. You know, it, it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the Hawks kept going. Another comment just come in. Um, not sure who it's from because they haven't signed the bottom and the text at the bottom but it says the Hawks kept going it paid off two goals in the last period I mean you just have to keep going it's all about a bounce and you take the bounces as you can get them don't you I mean we think think back to the, a bounce you just take the um, promotion relegation game against Eastside in Blackburn the other year that was a game that My was gosh. a game and it was a, a lucky bounce and yeah, I, I'm not again not being disrespectful, but it was just one of those times when things just go your way. And uh, ah, it was Andy shut the message, <laughs> but uh, you know th things just go your way, and they got a position where the puck was in the right place, and just tap it in. Mm -hmm. And it's the way things go. We'll be talking about penalties a little later on because there's one coming in from uh, another one coming in from Andy about one of the penalties from last night. But uh, there's two particular talking points regarding uh, penalty decisions from last night that I want to raise, and I actually have an answer. Thank you to Andy Boynton to my stacked penalty question. So we'll come back to that a little later on. But in the meantime, we've had a song selected. 
And I think, Jen, you might like to introduce this one. Nickelback. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's Nickelback and If Today Was Your Last Day. <laughs> After a bit of music, it's time to just go through our usual little reminders about where you can get your information from the Witness World. Don't forget to check out the YKK Witness Wild website, witnessworld.co.uk. And if you put Witness Wild at the end of Facebook and Twitter.com, that's where you'll find all your social media information. And of course, on the website, we've got information about our junior program, community programs, Learn to Skate, Junior Academy, etc., etc., etc. And of course, all of our sponsors that of YKK, our headline sponsor, Sprakes and Sun Witness, DMH Tires, Ruxton Electricals, CL Woodworking. Nails by Alicia, who you may have seen on our uh, goalposts, and our chosen charity of the year, the Halton Haven Hospice. So, Ro, what have we got coming up in fixtures? Okay, well, Saturday we have two games. We have the Witness Wild Women in Action against the Sheffield Shadows. That face-off is at one fifteen. Then we have the men making their way down to Bradford. That face-off is at 5 o'clock. On Saturday the 20th, we have the Wild Men going down to Blackburn. That is at 6 o'clock. On the 21st, we have Coventry coming to the Wild. So coming to the ice rink at 5.30 face-off. On the 27th, we have the Wild going to Coventry for a return trip to those guys. That's at 7.15. Then on Sunday the 28th, both teams are in action. We have the Wild Women against Nottingham Vipers. At 5.40, and then we host the Dragons at 5.30 on Sunday. And there's also a big event coming up at uh, Planet Ice Witness, is there not? Yes, on Friday, November 2nd, 7 to 10, they're going to host a UV party. And if you go online, you can get two tickets for £15. Uh, so check out planet-ice.co.uk and you can uh, select the Witness link. And that's where you will find the information for those. Oh, so yes, it's a very, very busy fixture list coming up uh, over the next couple of weeks, isn't it, everyone? It is. It's an exciting list. Mm, some tasty fixtures in that. I mean, of course, the one that we've been we're sort of waiting for is the um, the now reamalgamated Dragons at the end of the month coming to witness. But uh, I think this weekend on Saturday is going to be a, a toughie. Where are they at in the league table, the Dragons, by the way? Uh, the Dragons are... When we call it the league table, they are currently fifth. But when you actually consider that seventh through t- seventh, sixth, at fifth, and fourth are all on six points, third is on seven points, seconds on eight points, and top, which is Bradford at the moment, are on nine points. So it's only three points between uh, seventh and top. That's pretty tough. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, although it's early days. Oh, and we have an announcement about the bus time. Yes, we do. It leaves at one fifteen from Planet Ice Witness. Yes. So Saturday, one fifteen from Planet Ice Witness. And if you want to book a seat, all they have to do is just uh, message us on Facebook or Twitter, and Jen will take their their bookings. And that's the Witness Wild fan the YKK Witness Wild fan page. There you go. So look that up. Is this strap still Witness Wild ones for the address through yeah. Facebook? Yeah. So it's facebook.com slash Witness Wild ones, but the new official title is YKK Witness Wild fans. There you go. So uh, yes, drop a message through to there, and the prices are five pounds for season ticket holders, six pounds for non-season ticket holders, one pound for chi- one pound for children. So there Traveling you go. Traveling with adults. Mm-hmm. I'd hope nobody would drop their kids off and say go, but then oh. again, you never know. We a have fan is a fan. Yeah, we have another one here. Um, there's next Sunday. There's a skating gala raising money for Halton Haven. Uh, apparently, Julia Schutt's taking part. So oh, uh, very nice. There you go. A little bit of extra information coming through on the text. So if you want to text the show, you can do two ways. The direct one through to the studio will come up on my email screen is 60066. Start your message with HCR. Or you can send them direct to uh, my little other phone, which is, comes direct to me, so you can send them during the week, which is 07716672874. And that's a normal number, so you just have to send your message through. And it's also helpful if you tell me who you are, so that way my address book doesn't look really silly. And I'm sort of getting confused as to who sent messages in. 
And of course, th- most of those missions are courtesy of uh, Mr. Shut. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, well, um, yeah, poor Andy. He was getting rather busy on the poor scoreboard last night, wasn't he? <laughs> I can imagine. Poor Steve at the top doing the Twitter looked like he was stressing out as well. <laughs> I can only imagine. <coughs> I yeah. need to turn my notifications off. Uh, I, yeah, I, th- I think at, at Shutty and um, Steve Aspinall need to have a chat about arthritic thumb problems there with uh, Steve on the old Twitter last night. I'm surprised his phone didn't go into meltdown, poor thing. Uh, but um, ironically, the penalties last night were so few. And actually, I will do. I'll do this little one now if I can find the little piece of music. Not that one. Where is it? That's the one. It's this one. <laughs> yes, the theme to the good, the bad, and the ugly for the disciplinary penalty <laughs> section. <laughs> Just going through some of the penalties, because of course, one of the penalties from last night uh, was given for illegal equipment, and everyone's like, "Oh, why? What was it? Why was it illegal equipment?" And it was the chin strap was too slack. Because <clears throat> I actually asked Andy Boynton, our mm-hmm. referee from last night, and he said about there's a set distance that sort of a minimum or a maximum distance that the chin strap can be. And I'm sure you're going to tell us what that is, right? Apparently it's like one finger gap be- under your chin between your... What happens if you have a really big finger? Well, you can get your <laughs> finger in, but there you go. But there you Asking. go. But, you know, it... it, it, it Jen's I, lost Jen, it in the Jen's, studio, guys. Jen, I'll just put Jen's mic down because she's just lost the plot. She's turned into more of a laughing weeble than I do on BOD on a Thursday night. You okay there, Jen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Her face is really red, guys. But So that was that one. And there was another penalty that could have been called that, but wasn't, which was leaving the blue line too early at the end of the national anthem. And we have had it called in the past. And the players, have, players do get warned about it. They have been told several times not to leave that blue line. Yeah, so there we go. That, that's uh, that one. <laughs> We've got a couple more to come up a little later on. Well, actually, after the next song, because we'll have a little uh, little breather. Jen, yeah. you know what's coming up next. What have we got? Everywhere by Michelle Branch. <laughs> One time to go wild radio, it is time to sit back and relax and enjoy Mike Marl's Monday Mantra. So this weekend was a, a mixed bag. Yesterday we didn't turn up against Hull. Uh, poor game on our part. We need to do better than that if we want to keep going forward in, in the league this year. Tonight was a different game. Not as good opposition we turned up. We, we learned from our mistakes yesterday and roll on the, next of the, season, the rest of the season. Wise words on Mike Miles' Monday Mantra. Ah, yeah, he has such a way with words, does Mike? Yes, he does. <laughs> His wise mantras. Try and get one in us every week if we can. But yes, it, it it was one of those weekends in the end for the boys, but sometimes and, not, and again not taking anything away from uh, the Blackburn Hawks guys sometimes you need a game where you put a hat full in just to when if, you have, if you've had a particularly bad game in your head where you are not snatching at your stick you're relaxing back into things you're not stressing mm. you know it's you like can, a confidence builder again it is to kind of get back up on the horse so to speak yeah, it is. It's, it's one of those. Jen? No? Any yeah. extra thoughts? I mean, I've got plenty of messages coming through from Andy thick and fast. He said, Jill did a fantastic job um, writing down everything by hand, as she does every week. And uh, yeah, it, I bet st- she had writer's cramp. <laughs> so here we talk about Steve and Suddy. What about poor Jill? Yeah, that's true. She got uh, ignored. Sorry, Jill. We didn't mean to ignore your your fingers cramping. Yes, yes, we didn't. It's it was just one of those busy games where it was uh, another goal, another goal, and 
it, it was um, Saturday's edit for the highlights was quite short. Sunday's wasn't. It was <laughs> one of the longer ones. <laughs> Still, oh wow! I'm trying to think where I'm up to for the show tonight because things are going thick and fast because we've had so much to cover. But I think it's about time for quiz time. It's just a penalty one. Ah. Yes, it's you make the call time. Hashtag Team Stripies. So we shall have to race through this because we're it's quarter to the hour. Wow, time, time sure is flying. So yes, from last week, now this was a tricky one, I didn't understand this one properly, but yes, for hybrid icing, when there is no race for the puck, uh, what two things have to happen before the front linesman can blow the whistle? And the answer is, Ro? A defending player must cross his blue line and the puck must cross the icing line. Rule 6... 65. 65. V, if there is no race for the puck... Icing will not be called until the defending skater crosses his defending blue line and puck crosses the goal line, not between the goal posts. Yeah, basically, as long as it doesn't go through the blue paint. So yeah, that, that's a complicated one. That shows the difficulty of calling icing correctly these days. Question two. Team A is playing short-handed and they shoot the puck from their defensive zone while the penalty is still on the clock. However, the penalty expires as the puck travels down the ice and when the puck crosses the goal line, the teams are playing at even strength. Is it icing? No. And why is it? Rule 66 IV. Whether the t- whether a team is short-handed or not is decided by the number of skaters on ice at the time the puck leaves the player's stick. If the penalty box attendant has opened the door at the expiration of a penalty, but the player has not physically stepped onto the ice, he will be considered on the ice as far as interpretation of the icing is concerned. So, yeah. But basically, if that penalty is still on the clock as it leaves the stick, that's fine. But if it's still on the stick and the penalty expires and the player hasn't come out the box Mm -hmm. and the door opens, then you get an icing call by the sound of that. Gotcha. And the last one, can a bench minor penalty be sat by someone on the bench at the time of the incident? No, so King Kenny would not be able to go <laughs> and sit this penalty out. Aww. Because rule 117-III, a bench player min- minor penalty must be served by any skater who was on the ice the time the whistle to stop play or otherwise provided by these rules. Yeah, so it's things like um, too many men calls. It's got to be somebody on who's the ice. on that particular shift who didn't get off in time, basically. All right, so that's last week's. Now this week's questions. Can you give 2 plus 2 for high sticking for accidental harm to an opponent under double IH, sorry, under IHUK in-house rules? I think it depends on who the penalty's on. If it's on the wild, no. But if it's on the opponent, <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, well. I just think it depends on who the penalty's being called on, there personally. Well, yeah, I, mean, I don't have an argument with that one. <laughs> I don't think many of the wild fans will have an argument. Do you have an argument with that, Jen? No. No? <laughs> but what do you think? Do you think that would be a high sticking call? Yeah. I wouldn't think so. You think it would be, Jan? Mm. Yes, no? I think so. Well, I mean, I think there was an incident like this on Saturday where Ollie was caught with a stick that was he caught on the follow through of a shot. You know, he hit the shot down the ice, and Ollie's coming in on an angle, and the, the stick caught him. But uh, no penalty was called on that occasion. I think it depends on the position of the players. I could see that. Right. Well, again, as I say every week, answers on a postcard or send them in by text or email. Ah. Right. We have uh, question two. The first player to leave the player's bench during an altercation should be assessed what penalty? So what penalty for leaving the bench when there's an altercation? And we're assuming you're not cl- we're not classing this as, a, as one of these line changes, as they say, during a... Uh, some kind of altercation. So I'm going to assume there's a fight going on. Yeah. And somebody gets off the bench to go and participate in the fight. Yeah. I'd say game then. Five plus game. I would say ten. I think it's five in game for leaving mm. the player's bench. I don't think... It, it, I mean, I'd say minimum of a two and a ten, or at least a ten for an unsportsmanlike conduct. So, the only one I would say is if they're leaving the bench and they've got a letter and it's one of the 
captains or alternates and they're not going into the altercation they go into the officials mm -hmm. that would not be a penalty for me because they've got a letter they're going to speak to the officials but sounds like uh, somebody might know the answer someone sent a message <laughs> saying it's possibly two plus two so that was my other option, but I thought I'd go for the higher one. I, th instead. I think it's a five in game because it's there's actually a penalty on the game sheet called uh, where are we L P L B, which is leaving the players, uh, yeah, leaving the players bench. So I th there is a penalty, but what is it? All right, and the last one. Right. A player is winding up for a shot and makes contact with an opposition player with his stick. Is this action subject to a high sticking penalty? I'm going to say if he's in the motion of doing it, I wouldn't think so. Mm. If he's in the motion of doing it. I think it's where the, the, I'd say it depends if it's back swing, front, part of the front follow through swing or and where the players are. Yeah. It's a tricky one that. Those are some good questions. So yes, as usual, send your send your answers in. You can text either six double o double six. Start your message with HCR o double seven one six six seven two eight seven four. As we've had texts tonight, uh, or you can drop them into uh, radio at witnesswild.co.uk during the week. So that means we have to tune in next week to find out the answer. Oh yes, and it's all courtesy of um, use hashtag Team Stripies on eiha.co.uk. Very good questions. Yes, I love that little feature. And I actually had an I've got an answer to my stacked penalty question. Okay. I won't give it this week. I'm going to write it down properly, and I'll do it in a week's time or so. So you can make the listeners wait. Yes. Is what you're saying. It's basically if you've got four players in the penalty box stacked and there's no whistles as their penalties expires, who comes out in which order? But I'll phrase it properly because I spoke with with, uh, with Tony Boynton Latin, um, at the weekend and he clarified the standpoint that it should be. Okay. So we, I, I now have my answer, which is very good because it can be quite confusing. We'll be sitting on pins and needles waiting for the answer. <laughs> Ah, oh, right. But f coming back to a bit of the good, the bad and the ugly, we have a few naughty boys in the league at the moment. And they are... On Saturday the 29th, Bradford Bulldogs' David Williams was assessed a match penalty for kicking in the first period when they were playing the Sheffield Senators, and he's been suspended for three games and five penalty points. Ouch. So, yes, so he's missing games on October 6th, 13th and 14th. Uh, now, I, 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 I'm going to try and pronounce this Blackburn Hawks D1 player's name. It's uh, Denelius Num... Nomanovas, I think. I, 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 some, there are times when I'm glad I'm not the announcer. Uh, he picked up a match penalty for spearing in the second penalty of uh, Hawks against Solihull Barons on September 30th. So he's been suspended for three games and had five penalty points. So again, the 6th, 7th and 13th of October, he misses games. Um, Jakob Climber, Climber of Nottingham Lions has been given a match for unsportsmanlike conduct in the second period against Hunt Pirates. Uh, he's been given a two-game ban, five penalty points, so was out of action for the 6th and 7th of October. Uh, Sheffield Steel Dogs' Adam Culvert got match for fighting late in the third period of an Autumn Cup game with the Peterborough Phantoms. He got four games and five penalty points. And in NIHL North 2, Simon Furnival of the uh, D-Side Dragons was assessed a match penalty for boarding when they were playing the Telford Tigers D2, and he's been suspended for two games, five penalty points, and missed action on the 6th and 7th of October. So that means David Williams will not be playing against us next weekend, is that correct? If that's yeah, that's correct. how I read it. That looks like the case. So yes, it's, uh, you know, naughty boys uh, are getting punished, and, you know, they, they've... Upped some of the, they've upped some of the penalties this year. Of course, the boarding call's been changed to two and ten, which, to be honest, I think is the right call. Yeah, I you believe know. so. So I'm just just looking down. I mean, this weekend it was a um, we had an illegal equipment and a charging on the wild against the Blackburn Hawks and a holding three penalties. Wow, that's really impressive. <laughs> it, and even the game in Hull was actually very low penalties. I mean, it was 24 minutes, but there was a 10 minute for um, the YKK Witness Wild. So you're not, if you d discount that in terms of minors, it was eight against 14. So what was that penalty for? 
Uh, the two and ten. Yes, Board that was a boarding call for boarding on Danny call. Bullock. Yeah, so it, it, the, the the penalties are pretty low in some of the. Uh, there was one that had over twenty captions. I had to do for the highlight reel, and it takes its time. But of course, our highlights are up. I've had a busy two days. Sounds like it. So uh, we're looking forward to getting those. If you want to check them out, also last qu- quick one. Um, if you're out there on any YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the Witness Wild's own YouTube page. The more subscribers we get, the sooner we can get our little domain. So, so do we just go Witness Wild Ice Hockey? Yes, put that in. Or if you you can also find it, if you put in for the highlights, you find my page, which is Phoben Inc. There's also the playlist for the podcasts, which are all on the Witness Wild's own page. And then you can click the subscribe button, and there you have it. There we have and it. The sooner we hit the magic 100 or more, the sooner we get to uh, the magic of being able to put something extra on the site. And, of course, our Instagram has been going crazy at the weekend. I can imagine. We've had lots of people commenting on our Instagram followings, so uh, thank you all for taking part. So, both looking forward to the coming weekend? Of course. Play Bradford away, so that'll be a good time. Mm, It's always a fun time in Bradford. It is. It should be a really good game, as a matter of fact. It should be, yeah. The mo- uh, to me, as, as, co- as kooky rinks go, the only rink I know where they go upstairs to get to the away dressing room. I love Bradford Rink, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I just do. It's kooky. It's, it is. It's different. We'll just say it's different. Mm. Yeah. You have to go upstairs and upstairs and upstairs to get yeah. in, and then, oh. okay, you go upstairs to stand. If, we can always sit down at rink level, but if you want the high level, you have yeah. to go up. That's but one rink I can't go to because I can't go up all the steps. Aww. So I do miss going to that rink because it, it is quite fun. So uh, yes, it's uh, it's always a t- it's it's always tough when there's lots of steps like that. But it is a kooky rink. It's a fun rink to go to. It is a good fun rink. Ah, oh, time has absolutely <laughs> flown past this evening. There's been so many things to cover. I think we managed to fit everything in. If you want to drop us a shout in the week, as I say, you can drop them through to radio at witnesswild.co.uk or drop them in through our text, Facebook and Twitter. If you put TTGW Radio, that's for the radio show. Or if you put Witness Wild, that's for the club, of course. Your very own YKK Witness Wild. Uh, And the only one that's not Witness Wild is for Instagram, which is Witness Wild Official. Make sure it's Witness Wild Official for Instagram if you're checking them out. We're about out of time. Yes, it went by very quickly tonight. Yes. So, uh, nice to be back in the studio for once, Ro. Yes, it's very nice to be back. Jen, did you have a good time? Yeah. <laughs> not as nervous now, but yeah. yeah. Would I you know do it again? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be Her back. Her face is still red, guys. She'll be back. She'll be back. She will be. And as a treat, you get to introduce our last song. Yay. So, uh, before we have that, thank you both for coming this evening. Thank you for having thank us. You. And, uh, of course... There'll be more people uh, keeping me under control next week. I'll Good be back. luck, guys. Good I'll, luck. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday from nine with uh, musical mayhem, and I have a few nice. Tr- I haven't even written the show yet, so who knows what treats I have in store for you? You have one song. Yes, one I, song. I, I remind me before we leave. I will. Um, <laughs> so, for me and everyone, you too. Good night, everybody. Bye. And for me, it's good night. And Jen, you sign off with the last song, which is "In the End" by Linkin Park.